Good evening. You're watching the main news on Hoi International Business Channel. I'm Raymond Yang. Here are tonight's top stories. China and Japan try to resolve a dispute over the discharge of radioactive wastewater from the Fukushima nuclear plant. Finance chief Paul Chan is in the limelight as he puts across Hong Kong's points in San Francisco. And stock investment losses push the exchange fund into the red in the third quarter. China has agreed to work on a proper solution with Japan over the discharge of treated radioactive wastewater from the Fukushima power plant. The breakthrough came after President Xi Jinping met Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida on the sidelines of the APEC summit in San Francisco. With the world still busy digesting the landmark dialogue between Xi Jinping and Joe Biden, the host of this year's APEC summit made sure that other member nations were not overlooked. Sticking to tradition, the U.S. president brought the 20 or so leaders from the bloc together for a family photo. Singaporean leader Lee Shen Leung was spotted in the back row next to Hong Kong's financial chief, Paul Chan. She stood next to Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, whom he confronted at the G20 summit in Bali last year. With the week-long meeting in San Francisco drawing to a close, the leaders wasted no time wheeling and dealing. Apart from economic cooperation, they discussed how they should tackle climate change. The only existential threat to humanity. We either get this right or there's not going to be a whole lot of people around to talk about it. Every economy is seeing signs of what's to come if we don't act. Droughts, floods, seas rising, temperatures rising, and more and more unpredictable weather patterns. But bilateral talks on the sidelines are equally, if not more important than the actual summit. She met Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida for the first time in the year. Relations between the two neighbors sank to a new low after Tokyo defied warnings and discharged radioactive wastewater from the Fukushima nuclear plant into the sea. Kishida called for a calm and scientific approach in resolving the matter and urged China to end its import restrictions on Japanese seafood. In response, she stressed the importance of peaceful coexistence and seeking mutual benefit. A Beijing readout said the two parties have to find proper solutions for the Fukushima issue signaling a warming of frosty tide. Financial Secretary Paul Chan has rubbed shoulders with some of the world's most powerful leaders at the APEC summit. Chan, who is representing Chief Executive John Lee, spoke about cooperation in combating climate change. May see more reports. At a time when most people in Hong Kong were asleep, the city's financial czar Paul Chan was on the other side of the world, mingling with political and business heavyweights at the APEC economic leaders' informal dialogue in San Francisco. He shook hands with China's top diplomat Wang Yi before taking a seat next to President Xi Jinping, with President Joko Widodo of Indonesia on his left. Chen and Xi chatted for several minutes before the meeting started. U.S. President Joe Biden hosted the session, which centered on climate change and green transition. Chen stressed the importance of international cooperation and expressed his hope of working with APEC partners to foster sustainable and green initiatives. He said Hong Kong aims to achieve carbon neutrality before 2050 and is formulating a strategy for hydrogen development. Chen added that Hong Kong will join forces with Macau and other cities in the Greater Bay Area to develop an international center for green technology and green finance. The financial secretary also attended a session of the APEC Business Advisory Council 
and will meet top world leaders again before returning to Hong Kong this weekend. Maisie Mock, Cable News. A special lunch has been held to mark the 25th anniversary of the SAL's Legislative Council. Chief Executive John Lee joined lawmakers, senior officials and executive councillors at a traditional ceremony in the Legislative Council complex in Admiralty. They watched a video of the legislature's key moments before sitting down for lunch. In his speech, Lechco President Andrew Leung said the relationship between lawmakers and officials has improved after the electoral system was revamped two years ago. The exchange fund fell into the red between July and September after gaining in the previous three quarters. But there was some massive overall gain for the city's war chest in the first nine months of the year. Janice reports. The exchange fund which supports the Hong Kong currency, fell $5.5 billion between July and September after registering gains in the previous three quarters. It lost $13.7 billion from stock investments, $5.7 billion from Hong Kong shares and $8 billion from overseas equities. Foreign exchange investments took a $7.5 billion hit. One bright spot was the $15.7 billion profit from bonds. Despite the third quarter setback, the fund gained $110.9 billion in the first nine months of the year. Looking ahead, Monetary Authority Chief Executive Eddie U.S. said the investment environment remains uncertain. Whether U.S. inflation, especially surface inflation, will come down to the level uh, of the inflation target, which is 2%, uh, set by the uh, Federal Reserve, and that will affect the path of the interest rate. Uh, apart from whether interest rate will further rise or not, uh, whether interest rate will stay there for a much longer time is also another factor that will affect the uh, market sentiment. Yes, said geopolitical uncertainties will influence energy prices and that will affect inflation and interest rates. He added that Hong Kong's de facto central bank will continue to take a defensive approach in managing the exchange fund. Janice Lowe, Cable News. A man has been sentenced to five months behind bars for possessing two laser pointers near a protest site in Mong Kok four years ago. Chu Kai Lun had earlier pleaded not guilty of possessing offensive weapons. Pleading for leniency, his lawyer said 40-year-old Chu had not been able to work for the past decade because of epilepsy, and his behaviour has been good since his arrest in 2019. But Kowloon City Magistrate Castro Lam said the offence was very serious, as the pointers could cause serious damage. Because Chu had not used the pointers, the judge cut his sentence by one month and hoped he could reintegrate into society after serving his term. Overseas again, the United Nations has warned of starvation in Gaza as hundreds of thousands of Palestinians whose homes were destroyed by Israel desperately search for food, water and safety. There is nowhere safe in Gaza. Whether in the north, in the south, in the middle, um, there is none. People have been asked to go from the north to the south, but in reality, one, f one, one third of the people killed have been killed in the south. So the south is not safe. Even the UN compounds are not safe. Relief agencies say Palestinians are surviving on just one meal a day. Children especially are in danger of malnutrition and depend on whatever handouts they can get. In Deir al-Bala in central Gaza, Ahmed Shabat lost both his legs when Israel bombed a market. The three-year-old boy's entire family were killed earlier when his house was attacked. Doctors say Ahmed is totally traumatized and cannot understand what has happened. The United Nations human rights chief has asked Israel to allow his investigators to enter al-Shiva hospital to check claims that Hamas had its command centre under the complex. Doctors fought off smoke after Israeli soldiers stormed Gaza's biggest hospital in the past two days, 
looking for evidence to implicate Hamas. The Palestinian group has denied Israel's claim and said weapons found in the hospital were planted by Israeli soldiers. A UN search could determine the truth. As Israeli forces continued their offensive in Gaza, they found the bodies of two hostages seized by Hamas in their deadly raid on southern Israel last month. Almost 12,000 Palestinians have been killed as Israel retaliated. The Hang Seng Index closed 2.1% lower today, dragged down by tech giant Alibaba, which plunged 10%. Investors offloaded shares of Alibaba after it scrapped plans to spin off its cloud unit. This was because of uncertainties triggered by U.S. restrictions on chip exports to China. Washington's move also affected other tech companies. Tencent lost 3 percent, while JD.com was down 2.4 percent. Meanwhile, Gourmet jumped 80 percent on Chinese media speculation that the retailer will open 10,000 stores within three years. Now a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index ended the week down by 378 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Alibaba was down $8.10. Tencent was down $9.60, while the Tracker Fund was down $0.38. Cents. Li Auto was up $4.80, while AIA was up $0.25. Cents. The forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, the euros at 8.47, the pound at 9.69, while the Australian dollar is at 5.07. In Europe, the London FTSE is currently up 60 points. The public toilet at the Park Shek Kok Promenade has been declared the best in Hong Kong. Members of the Toilet Association inspected over 300 public restrooms before making the decision. They considered various factors, including comfort, accessibility, safety and hygiene. The toilet in Tai Po stood out above the rest as it has a glass canopy that allows the sunlight in and an area for users to charge their phones. The association also named and shamed dirty public toilets on Kachik Street in Saiwan and Centre Street in Saiyang Pun, saying they need to improve the most. And finally, the weather. It will be fine and very dry tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 16 and 23 degrees. The mercury is expected to rise slightly next week. And that's our main news for Friday night. Join us for late news at the earlier time of 10.30. I'm Raymond Yeung. Good night.